Quite a few people have emailed asking me to do a video about how to use the sustain pedal on your piano, um, which is quite an interesting topic and it can seem a little bit scary the first time you start dealing with your pedal. Um, the thing, the main thing to say is really it's not that difficult and once you've got that hang of the basics it becomes instinctive really really quickly. Okay. Let's start with the basic basics. I'm going to be talking about the sustain pedal, which is the pedal on the right hand side of, of your piano if you've got more than one. On this piano I've only got a sustain pedal, it's a little plug-in one, but if, if you're on a real piano or if you're on a, on a digital piano that's got a proper pedal rack at the bottom, you'll have either two or maybe even three pedals. Okay. The one on the left is the soft pedal. The way it works on a real piano is by moving the hammers closer to the strings, which um, helps you to make quiet sounds more easily. It also changes slightly the, the character of the piano, but that's something to talk about another day. The pedal over on the right is sometimes called the loud pedal, okay, which isn't really right because it doesn't make your piano louder. It can help you be loud, you know, if you want to make a lot of noise, the sustain pedal the sustain pedal can certainly help you do that, but that's not primarily what it's about. On a real piano, what the sustain pedal does is lift all the dampers off all the strings. Okay, so any note you press is sustained for as long as the string will ring. So that's sustain pedal down, and that's sustain pedal up. Okay, what happens if you play with the sustain pedal up, then every string inside your piano has a damper on it which falls back down as soon as you take your finger off the note and damps the string. Okay. When you press the pedal, all of those dampers stay up. If you're using a digital piano, obviously it just um, uh, it just imitates that effect, but to all intents and purposes, it, it, it's the same. Okay. Now, when people first discover the sustain pedal, they tend to overuse it. Okay, and it's it's a really brilliant, powerful tool, um, but it, it is easy to use it too much. And what happens if you do use it too much is you you tend to end up with a bit of a, a bit of a mushy sound, okay? So there are a couple of little techniques you can use to make sure that your use of the sustain pedal is um, proportionate and actually adds to the character of your music. It's useful for two or three things. First of all, it obviously it sustains things, it keeps keeps things together. If you are making big jumps on the piano keyboard, whoops. <laughs> then it can hold the lower notes on until you get to the top ones. Okay, so what I did there was sustain, and then as soon as I pressed the upper chord, I took the pedal off at the same time. Okay, I'll bring my pedal out here so you can see a bit more clearly what I'm doing with it there. Okay, so pedal down, it's sustaining, went for the upper chord, and I push down on the upper chord as I bring the lower one off. You don't have to get a really thick chord by doing that, but if I want to separate the two, pedal on, pedal off. So if you've ever got a melody which has a big jump in it, okay, then you can use the pedal like that. If you've had classical piano lessons, that is how you will have been taught to use the piano, a lot, the pedal a lot of the time, especially if you're playing um, Schubert or Brahms or sort of romantic piano music where there are often quite big jumps between uh, between chords and bits of the melody going on. If you're playing kind of pop piano, ballad piano, jazz, blues, whatever, you're more likely to be pedalling along with the chords to give them depth and resonance. Okay, if we consider a, a sort of um, a fairly uh, a, a fairly regular kind of piano comp that we might play with a fastish ballad, uh, something like this. <laughs> It's a very simple chord sequence, E, B, C sharp minor, A. Okay, I'm using the pedal there to give it resonance and to stick it together. If I play it without the pedal, it's not necessarily a bad effect, but it's very different. Okay, and it, it you know could sound a bit spiky. It sounds more kind of aggressive with the pedal. It's kind of grander. 
it's more rolling, it's, it's a bigger sound, okay? The key thing to do is to make sure you pedal and re-pedal in the right places. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing with the pedal here. If we strip that chord sequence down to its basics, E, B, C sharp minor, A, okay? What I'm doing is pedaling between each chord. So I go down with the pedal on the E, okay? And then as I move my fingers, I go for the B, and as soon as I hit the second chord, I take my foot off the pedal, and if you can see it down there, and it goes back down again, okay, straight away. Then to C sharp minor, same, as soon as I hit the chord, foot comes off the pedal and back down again to sustain it, and same with A, re-pedal, okay? So it's pedal, re-pedal, re-pedal, re-pedal. If I'm sloppy with my pedal, or if I hold my pedal on throughout the sequence, I end up with mush. Okay? And if I make things more complicated in the comp, I can do pretty much the same sort of thing. Okay, here we go. I'm re-pedaling, doing a sort of double pedal movement, like that, at the start of every new chord. And generally, if you follow that pattern, you'll be absolutely fine. Um, you'll find it comes automatically after a while. I, I don't really think much about what my pedal is doing. I just let my foot get on with it. Um, the important thing to do is to listen to what you're playing. But piano, I've said this before, is unique among instruments, or fairly unique among instruments, in that you can play it without really listening to what you're playing, because it's a more mechanical process. Not like playing the trumpet, where you have to listen to the quality of the note you're producing, or the violin. On the piano, you can just, you know, your fingers can just do all the work, and you can go to sleep if you like. But listen to what you're doing, and if it's sounding mulchy, or if it's losing its crispness, then think about what you're doing with your pedalling. Equally, if you're playing a fairly complicated tune, just be a little bit careful because, especially if you're playing note passing notes that are outside the chord, you can end up with a bit of mulch, so you, you might find yourself pedalling a bit more. Likewise, if one chord's staying on for a long period of time, then you might want to kill the pedal in the middle and re-pedal. Also, and I was talking about this in a video the other day, it's really important to understand the differences between a real piano and a digital piano, okay? On this piano, which is a fairly cheap digital, there's no sympathetic resonance, okay? Uh, in other words, on a real piano, when you have the pedal down and you play notes, it makes other strings that aren't being played vibrate in, in sympathy. And if you do that over a, a relatively long period of time, you get quite a nasty sort of background whine, okay? So if you just practice on a digital piano that doesn't have sympathetic resonance, but doesn't mimic the sound of or all the other keys being up, and some do, um, then just be aware of that. Okay. The way to test to see if your piano does sympathetic resonance is to hold a chord of C down silently, and then do this. Okay. If your piano simple, um, now if you did it on the real piano, you, you would hear that, that that chord ringing faintly there, and you get a kind of noise coming out of it. If your piano, your digital piano, simulates sympathetic resonance, you will hear that on your digital. As you can hear, there's nothing there, nothing coming out, no sympathetic resonance at all. Yeah. So just be aware of that, and if all the time you practice you're on a digital piano with no sympathetic resonance, just be aware that when you go into a real piano, or a more expensive digital piano, you might get caught out. Okay, so again, listen, listen, listen. The other thing is, when you're playing on a really big grounds, big grounds have great big long strings, and they, they sing for longer. Okay, so if you sustain a note like that on a normal upright piano, it will die off fairly quickly. If you do it on a 20 foot concert Steinway, it will last an awful long time. That has implications for your pedalling because it means 
Um, if you pedal for quite a long time over a chord, you're more likely to get a mulchy sound coming through from too many strings rigging than you are on a, on a smaller piano or on most digital pianos. Okay, So really, it, it's very simple. It's a case of um, thinking about, or not thinking about really, it's a case of listening, using your ears, and a after a while, it, it will come fairly naturally. Just make sure that you're not mulching chords together or you're not making tunes muddy. Okay, use the cut, use the pedal to make things ring, to make things roll, but try to avoid the mulch. Okay, so as I was showing you in that example, pedal, 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 pedal. pedal. Yeah, especially be careful. As you, I had a passing B note there. If you've got a big chunky passing notes in the bass, be very careful how you pedal those. You can get you can get a you can get quite a quite a mulchy sound coming out. This is the problem with pedaling is it does vary from piano to piano. So you know just get used to doing it on your piano, but then just be aware that when you go and play another piano, it might be different. Okay. I hope that's answered some of your questions. Uh, sometime soon, I'll also um, I'll, I'll head over and find a real piano somewhere. I might, might do it um, next time. I've got my real piano easily accessible. It's not at the moment. It's miles away. Um, I'll, I, will, I will do a, a video on um, soft pedal uh, on on on, on the, the left hand pedal. Okay, but that's a completely different story. Um, so yeah, great. Hope you find that useful. Um, if you're new to my channel, please subscribe. That would be great. You might also like to look at my book, How to Really Play the Piano, uh, the stuff your teacher never taught you, which covers all the stuff I, you know, I talk about uh, in fairly general terms, like you know, playing chords and getting started with improvisation and things like that. Okay. Um, if you have any questions, um, comments, stick them in the comment thread. I will do my best to get back to you as soon as I can. There we go.